What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome in to another episode of the Triple Play Fantasy Football Show, a proud member of the Fantrax Podcast Network and the FantraxHQ.com fam. D Mendy here, joined as always by a guy who spills coffee on his dogs. It's the doc, Eric Melson. What's going on? It's a good thing I spilled coffee on a white dog and the stain is still there one week later. You're such a bad seed, you. Also, normal part of the show here, the someone who is a breaker of hearts and nailer almost nailed an insane prediction with the Browns being the Chiefs, and that's the Brad Sardamas, aka Brad Kilwer. What's going on? I'm just dreaming up ways of the Washington football team to get Deshaun Watson. That's fair. I mean, he's in every jersey, so why not Washington? But fellas, enough chitter chatter. We have a guest here, and I need to introduce him the right way. So, Maestro, hit it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you will, we welcome in standing at six foot something from the University of Syracuse, weighing in at what the scale calls sexy. This man has defied <laughs> greatness with just three letters T M R. A senior fantasy football analyst at ESPN, a molder of minds as the author of the New York Times bestseller, Fantasy Life. The founder of the secret weapon that is the Fantasy Life app. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. I give you an actor, a writer, a puppet master, a podcaster, a dad joker, the fantasy god, Matthew. Boop, 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 Mary. That is definitely an intro. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, it is Syracuse University, by the way, just for the record. Not <laughs> Syracuse. Just a, a heads up there for the next time you have somebody, a, a fellow Orange on the show. But uh, happy to be here, guys. Appreciate the invitation. For the listeners, Dave was wearing a purple wig while he did that intro. And uh, and sunglasses. It was a lot. There was a lot, <laughs> lot to unpack there, candidly. Even though I, I had to take them off because I could not read my, uh, my typing with the sunglasses. But Matthew, man. Absolute honor. As I said, everything except obviously mixing up my oranges there. Everything about you is true. And uh, obviously one of the best in the game, if not the best. So um, I just want to start off by first saying for the people that live under a rock, can you tell us a little bit about you, about the book and about the app? Because the Fantasy Life brand itself is just grown to an astronomical amount of uh, publicity or out there. And just curious for everybody in case they're not familiar with it. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so yeah, I'll just, I mean, I appreciate that. Uh, we're getting there with Fantasy Life. So in 2013, I wrote a book called Fantasy Life. It was published by Riverhead Books. Uh, it debuted at number five on the New York Times bestseller list. It spent, you know, uh, multiple months on the list, which I was thrilled about. Really proud of that. Um, uh, you know, it took me two years to write. It's, uh, if you're a fan of my writing, it's the best thing I've ever written. If you hate my writing, I think you will hate this less than any of my other writing. Um, whatever. It, you know, at this point, by the way, it's like you can get a you can get a used copy of the book on Amazon for a couple of bucks. So it's it's dirt cheap. Uh, but at any rate, the book, um, I was really proud of it. And uh, what the book is, is the book is sort of there's kind of two books in one. The book is basically a story all about fantasy football. And when I was pitching it to, uh, to, you know, to Penguin Books, which owns Riverhead, and, um, uh, you know, pitching it to all the different book publishers, I said, like, basically, I'm going to do a fantasy football book that I can pitch on The View. And by that I meant is that I, <laughs> it's a universal fantasy football book. It's not, it, there's not, there's no theory in it. There's no, it's, it's not particularly nerdy. It's, uh, it's a very um, evergreen and fun book that what I want to do is I want to do a book that celebrated everything that I love about fantasy sports, the, the community, the camaraderie, the competition, the crazy, uh, the crazy punishments for last place, the insane draft day traditions, um, you know, weird rules, the, the, the obsession that people have, the, the outlandish things they do to try the outlandish things that they've done to, you know, whether get to a draft, make a trade, 
you know, uh, I have a section on cheating, the most ingenious ways I've heard of people trying to cheat. And so just all the things that I love about fantasy football, like, uh, you know, I have a story in there. There's a, you know, uh, it, it's now become somewhat commonplace. But at the time that I wrote the book, it was a very novel thing. These tattoo leagues where the loser of the league has to get a tattoo chosen by the winner of the league. And so, like, there's a kid walking around uh, Omaha, Nebraska right now that has a tattoo of, uh, you know, of, of Justin Bieber's face that says hashtag YOLO swag. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't have to be a fantasy player to appreciate how funny that is. Obviously, if you are a fantasy player, you can appreciate it even more. But so there's lots of stories like that, that even if you don't, I got a lot of feedback from people about, hey, I, you know, I don't play fan. My wife doesn't play fantasy football or, you know, my boyfriend doesn't play or whatever. And I gave them the book and they really enjoyed it, even though they didn't play. Um, you know, like I found a league in the Bronx, New York, where the loser league has to dress up as a lion and the rest of the league chases him with a paintball gun. That trying means, to get, you know, oh my God. That, right. Like you don't have, to, that's funny. Like you don't have to play fantasy to appreciate that's funny. So I wrote that book in 2013. And like I said, it did really well and woven in throughout the, all those stories of fantasy football uh, is the story of sort of my life and how I basically went from, you know, a nerdy 14 year old kid trying fantasy sports for the first time to ultimately winding up as the senior fantasy analyst for the largest sports media company in the world, uh, a position that I've held for the last 13 years. And so um, it's that story. And, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of ups and downs. And I think it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of really interesting lessons, life lessons and career lessons in there. And so um, uh, when the book came out and it was so successful and people resonated with it in such a big way, I thought there was more to do there. And so um, along with some friends, I formed what you guys referenced is the Fantasy Life app. And it's free to download. You can go to fantasylifeapp.com. And it's a community, right? Basically, it's where you can, you know, like most social networks, you can you can post, you can comment, you can like, you can share, you can DM, you can do all the things you can normally do on a social network, but it's all about fantasy sports, DFS, gambling. Should I make this trade? Who should I pick? Who do you like in half point PPR? It's all like-minded folks. It's real time, obviously, because it's an app and it's, you know, it's not it's not posting on a message board where you post and you hope somebody responds and then you got to check back in and refresh. It's all, you know, um, very quick. And then the best part of it is, is that we have some tools that help you out. And probably our most notable, our most famous tool is we have we have lightning fast alerts, the fastest alerts in the industry. Um, bar none, if you go to the app store, we're at 4.8 plus stars on iOS. We're at five stars on Android. We have thousands of reviews and every review is like best alerts, fastest alerts, beats, you know, beats Bleach Report, beats Roto World, beats ESPN, beats Fox, you know, pick a, pick somebody by five, 10, 15 minutes. And as you guys know, you know, those minutes make a big difference when you're trying to rush to the waiver wire or, 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 uh, or rush to a sports book to try to, to get a bet down before the line moves. And so, um, it's, uh, it's been real successful and, uh, you know, we love it. And it's a great community of, uh, of really passionate fans. And I would highly recommend, I, again, it's hundred percent free, um, checking it out, listen and download it. If you, if you hate the app, then just delete it, whatever. It's a free app. Who cares? But I would give it a chance and, uh, and see what you think. The alerts have stopped for now. They'll, they'll pick back up in football season. Now that it's sort of the off season, we don't do the alerts. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would definitely check it out. It's a great community. Matthew, Matthew, the only thing I don't like about it is it's gotten so big. I remember when my brother and I were first using it, no, and I think stop, Emmanuel- Stop, stop. I used it. It was my secret weapon, and I was not showing anybody it. And then I think you saw like a screenshot or something I took, and you saw like a notification pop up from it. And I, I remember it got me Nick Chubb when uh, Carlos Hyde got traded. And yep. I was like, and I remember everybody kept asking me how you're picking up guys so quickly. I will- 110%. This is not just because you're sitting here, Matthew. I'm 169% backing what you said. And that 69 is not an accident. But again, it's honestly the best app. Matthew is not like, is not lying about that. 
hundred percent. And um, it, it is actually, it's kind of funny though, cause I have been still getting baseball alerts from it. Does it not? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm still getting a lot of baseball stuff. So I love it. You, you can customize, you can customize which alerts you want and, um, and which sports, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. Um, Matthew, which I'm great. curious. Yeah. But that's been our biggest problem, honestly, is, is like no one wants to share it with any of their friends or the league <laughs> because it's kind of this secret weapon. So that's been a that's been a challenge for us, you know, because we can't get any word of mouth. But it's, you know, but it's great. Matthew, I'm curious. You know, we all got into fantasy for the love of it and just kind of having it as an outlet for our day jobs. It can be, you know, intensely. Uh, uh, it's something that we, we really enjoy to do. Um, so I'm curious, you know. Having this be your your nine to five, something that you you spend so much time on, something that you you know you're spending so many plates. Do you ever get tired of of dealing with fantasy, or is this still you know you love it like your first day? Yeah, I mean, there's times you get try, tired of it, you know. Um, uh, yeah, I, there are times where I still get tired of it. Like you know what I what I like to tell people is is that I have an amazing job. I think I have the best job in the industry. I have an incredible job. I'm insanely lucky, but it's a job, right? Yeah. And and the parts of the job, and it's probably unfair to loop fantasy fantasy football into the parts of the job. So, like for example, I still love fantasy football, right? The game itself, you know. But do I love you know looking on Twitter when I've said I'm making it up when I say I love Ryan Tannehill and then Derek. Yeah runs for four touchdowns and Tannehill's, you know, QB 15 on the week. And you're like, well, you know what I mean? And, you know, I got people calling me an idiot or whatever. Um, you know, so I don't love stuff like that. Right. I don't, you know, when it's Wednesday at, you know, Wednesday morning, it's noon. I get, I get off the podcast. I've done, you know, uh, you know, work all day, Sunday, all day, Monday, all day, Tuesday, done, you know, a bunch of shows, rankings, you know, and Wednesday and I get up the podcast. I've just done an hour podcast that of course I've prepped for. We do an hour podcast every day here at ESPN. And then I'm just like, all right, 5,000 words. Yeah. Love eight. Do by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. <laughs> all righty. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's that moment of dread where I sit down and like, all right, what am I writing about today? And like trying to figure out, you know, uh, I, you know, cause I've had a term paper due every week of my life for right. the last years. And so, um, you know, so there are moments like that where like where the column isn't coming or I'm struggling with the open or whatever it is, you know. And um, so there are parts of my job that, you know, get challenging. Um, but uh, but yeah, for the most part, I still love fantasy football. I don't know if that answers your question. What do you what do you do to get over that hump when you have that writer's block or you're kind of dragging and. You know, you, you really could just use a vacation, but you can't take one at the moment. What do you do to, to kind of just power through? It depends on what, what I'm stuck on, right? So if I'm, you know, if I'm stuck on player analysis, you know, there are times where it's like, so the idea of love-hate is all about expectations. And, you know, and I thought of the name love-hate in about five minutes in 1999, never thinking, of course, that it would become, you know, uh, would become my career that it would become the brand I'm most familiar, you know, you know, um, that I'm most known for, that it would become a column that would run on the front page of the largest sports media website in the world, you know, for an entire day, every Thursday on the NFL season. Like, you know, right. you don't think about any of that. You're just like, all right, what's, what's, what's a catchy title? Love, hate. That sounds, you know, I don't want to just start set. Like what's something interesting? Love, hate. All right. You know? And so, um, you know, if I was doing it now, like I wouldn't pick the word hate. That's too strong a word. Um, and too many people still misconstrue it, but like, like picking the quarterbacks I hate every week is a, you know what I mean? Cause you're like, well, you know, you're like, you're sitting there like, I guess I should say I hate Drew Brees cause I'm his QB 15, but like, right. I still have right. Drew Brees projected for like 18 and a half fantasy points. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just sort of like, so that's, you know, there's stuff like that where I feel like sometimes I'm, I'm forced into a box, you know what I mean? Like, because of the con because of the construct or the um, the structure of the column or a particular segment on a TV show or the podcast, I feel like I have to sometimes forcing a pick isn't the right way to describe it. And I try to couch it and I'll explain like, okay, yes, I hate him, but I still think it's a good, you still have to start him, but you know, I'll, I'll try to explain it, but it's, um, it's a challenge. So 
to answer your question in terms of how do I work through that, if, you know, so if it's on analysis, I'll try for a different position. Sometimes I'll call a researcher that I'm friends with that I work with and I'll say like, hey, I'll try to talk it through with him. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's about the open, then I'll be like, you know, what? I'm just going to put that aside. And I'm going to work on on the, the piece of the column or I'm going to, mm-hmm. you know, or sometimes I'm just like, all right, you know what? Let me just screw around on Twitter for a half hour. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, that. Like I'll, I'll get up and just sort of walk around and clear my head and just try to like whatever. And, you know, I, I remember one time talking to a writer who told me, you know, his advice was just write something, anything. Doesn't have to be good. Don't worry about it being good. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll just literally write something and I'll be like, I know this sucks and I'm going to rewrite every word of this, but let me just get something down. Mm-hmm. So I'll do that. And just to get a flow going and then I'll go back and I'll, I can't tell you how many times I've written like four paragraphs and then on the fifth paragraph, I'll, you know, and then I'm writing the column and then I'm halfway through the opening story and I'm like, you know what? The story starts in paragraph five. Those first four right. paragraphs that I just spent two hours on, completely useless. <laughs> the story starts, right. I really need to start this on paragraph five. So it's, this is a lot of inside baseball. I don't know how interesting this is to your audience, but no, absolutely. that's how I do that. Awesome. Well, we are very excited that Matthew is here hanging out with us today. I want to be respectful of his time. So I want to get through a lot with a little time here. So on deck, what we have in the huddle, bitter berry or very berry. Fantasy okay. football is a year to year game. Players value can change so much from one season to the next. And I know ADP is not quite out yet. So I took a poll on Twitter and got the six most controversial names to rank next season. And it's going to be Matthew's job if he's going to be a bitter berry or a very berry on those guys for next year. We'll finish out with a little question of the week and a little game at the end of the show. So if you are ready to give this episode a try in, we're ready to help save your ears from a cry. But first, if you subscribe to the pod yet, make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button wherever you find your podcasts. Want to hear more Triple Play? Great news for you. We have a fantasy baseball and basketball show that you can check out. Available anywhere you get your podcasts. If you're enjoying the content, how about being the cats meow and leaving us a five-star rating and review to support the show? Check us out on Twitter and IG at Trip Play Fantasy. Eric and Brad run our social media and provide daily questions, bad takes, and of course, our weekly episode drops. Our podcast is the equivalent of nibbling on a puppy's paw. Put those little pads between your teeth. Thank you to our loyal listeners for tuning in each and every week. And we're going to jump right into Bitterberry versus Veryberry with Matthew Berry right after this quick break. And we're back. Bitter berry or very berry. So Matthew, I have again, say, I, got- I have to say, David, if I may, there is uh, there are more rhymings and human sound effects on this show than I thought there were going. To be. <laughs> That's why we're different. That's why we're the best in the business. There you go. Fair. Understood. Thank, thank you for not leaving. <laughs> I was hoping that uh, that sound effect didn't scare you away. <laughs> yeah. Duly noted. Uh, so yeah, Matthew. Very people know the bitter berry. It's yeah. a thing for you, obviously. But I've, there's never been a very berry, so I'm incorporating that in. I got six names on this list of from people that were given to me on Twitter, and I'm interested in your thoughts as it stands right now for next season. And let's start off with number one, and that's Hollywood Brown. How are you feeling about him? I know he finished strong this year. How are you looking at him compared for next season? Yeah, I'm nervous about Hollywood Brown. You know, look, I get it, but like. He was he was great weeks 12 on, right? This is a guy that had averaged 16 points a game. But it was so touchdown dependent. He scored in five of his final six games, right? Um, uh, you know, it was – here's a guy that, you know, in the nine games which he didn't score a touchdown, he averaged 8.4 fantasy points. He had 50 or fewer yards in 10 of 16. He had four or fewer catches in 10 of 16. Uh, I believe um, that – he that the Ravens cannot go into next season without adding to their wide receivers that they they can't be sitting there going like we got to give our guy a chance like Hollywood Brown is a nice player and Mark you got Mark Andrews but Miles Boykin Willie Sneed like what are we doing here guys Devin DuVernay like like it's such a deep free agent class at wide receiver right between Galladay and 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 Juju and Allen Robinson and Marvin Jones and Corey Davis and Will Fuller and so on and so forth. There's it, there's such a deep class and that I feel like Baltimore has to get somebody real there to help out Lamar Jackson. Um, and when they do, you know, the 25% target share that you're seeing from Marquise Brown, I think, goes away. 
And I think he becomes a player that's probably better in real life than he is in fantasy, which is where he is somebody that um, has some big games, will help you out. But I think the consistency is going to be hard to catch, right? Like I just, like a small guy like that being touchdown dependent scares me, right? You know, I I just, he just doesn't, I still think that's going to, even with the release of Mark Ingram, I still believe that team's identity will be run first. So even if he even if he becomes a number two wide receiver on the Ravens and he's getting somebody's number two cornerback, albeit with a smaller target share, you don't like Marquise Brown? Well, I mean, again, it's all relative. Like when you say you don't like him, like I mean, you know, I I like the player fine. I think he's fine. Uh, I'm not worried about him being like, I don't feel like Marquise Brown was shut down by elite corners this year. I don't feel like that was the problem. Right. I don't think they they threw it very much. You know what I mean? Right. I, I feel like, you know, he'd get like, it's getting massive target share. Like, it was just like, first off, Lamar was bad in the first half of the year. But again, like, it was all, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Like, it just, it, when you watch those games, it's like, it's Lamar running for 50 yards. And then it's J.K. Dobbins running. And like, it's you know, and, yeah. and by the way, they don't have to score a ton because their defense is so good. So it's not like an explosive offense. I, I don't know. Like, he was wide receiver 45 this year in points per game. And this is a guy that was, you know, and that includes a guy that scored, you know, a touchdown in five or six games. I don't know. Like, so. Yeah. He's a tough guy. And I think it's interesting yeah. you brought up. He also was kind of used differently at the end of the year. He became kind of a more of an under guy. Wasn't having as much a dot, which he was known as Mr. A uh, or um, I'm sorry. He was all the air yards guy. Like, uh, listen, they, ex- they expanded his route tree, which is great. And, you know, he became a more complete receiver, but again, like, is that what you like? Is that what you want? Like we, we turn suddenly are we turning Marquise Brown into, you know, freaking Julian Edelman? Like, I, <laughs> like, like, um, Hey, you know the really fast guy? Let's not have him run deep. Like you're like, wait, what? Like I, I just, I, again, I could be dead wrong on this. You're asking me, you know, in the middle of January. Right. Uh, but as we sit here in the middle of January in 2021, you know, will I have 30 to 35 wide receivers ranked ahead of Marquise Brown coming into next year? I will. All right. So bitter berry for Mr. Hollywood Brown as it stands in middle of January here. Let's move to the guy next who I got more than any other name of the responses I got. And that was Michael Tom- Thomas, Mr. Can't Guard Mike, Mr. Master of the Slant. Uh, Matthew, he's tough. What are you? Obviously, they'll have a new quarterback next year, as, as it seems. And uh, he just got a bunch of surgery done. So what are your thoughts on Michael Thomas? You know, it's a great question. I honestly... I actually think Michael Thomas is going to be a value next year. Ooh, spicy. I like it. I do, because I think people are going to be out on him. I mean, you're a guy that – here's a guy that was the consensus number one wide receiver in fantasy, you know, um, coming into this year and has been, you know, a top three, four guy for a long time. Bad year. Drew Brees – you know, let's assume Drew Brees retires. No Drew Brees, off the bad year. Like, you know, I think people are going to be out on Michael Thomas. And I actually think he's going to be a value. Like, he's going to go in the second, maybe even third round. And he's still going to, like, I mean, let's look at that team. We, we suddenly worried about Traquan Smith, Manuel Sanders, <laughs> right. Harris. Like, I mean, we'll see what they do in free agency. We'll see what they do in the draft. But as we sit here today, again, in January 2021, like, who's getting – you know, like we think Sean Payton's suddenly not going to throw anymore. Like, I don't believe the Taysom Hill starting quarterback for the Saints all next year. I actually think it's going to be Jameis. I think they re signed Jameis and they keep Taysom Hill as a gadget guy. But even still, I just think he still gets massive target share. Like, he was a guy that um, this year honestly should have been shut down. And Thomas, like, played through it. Um, Thomas played through it. Um, you know, because he thought, hey, I, you know, there's a chance we can go to the Super Bowl. It's probably Drew's last year. But I think in a normal year, he would have just shut it down. So I'm, I'm you, in on Michael Thomas at what I think will be a value next year. Watch him, watch him go in the third round and catch 110 passes again. Matthew, I'm with you on that because from 2017 to 2019, he 
uh, increased the amount of receptions, the amount of yardage, but his touchdowns were five, nine, and nine. And when you think about that, he set an NFL record, 149 catches, but only got nine touchdowns. You figure that ratio to improve. He's never had double digit touchdowns, but you look at someone like James Jones, James Jones had a career year of 14 touchdowns and never had double digits after. So I think that's something people don't talk about. It's the more catches you have, there were more opportunities to score. And Thomas has just never had that huge touchdown season. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, I think he's going to continue to be the focal point along with Kamara of that offense, regardless of who quarterback is. And I think he'll be a value next year. Oh, I like a, a better Barry or a very Barry positive. Sure. So let's go to the next guy here, Miles Sanders. He was RB23 at around 14 points a game. A QB change spiked his scoring to 20 or more PPR points in two of the last three games this uh, season. So I'm curious, Matthew, he's also kind of an enigma. I don't know what to do with Matt. Uh, he's right now probably a round two, round three guy, but the hype going into last year kind of got out of control. What are we doing with uh, hey, This is a guy that was on my preseason. I cannot tell you how much grief I got coming into this year about saying Miles Sanders is not a first round guy. He is not a top seven running back. I don't understand what you guys are seeing here, you know? And uh, so that one ended up making, uh, making me look smart. Some of it was, you know, um, and people were like, well, Doug Peters has never had a guy like this. It's like, well, um, okay. But he's also never used, you know, whatever. What he's Doug also Peters, Doug Peterson. He's also Doug Peterson. Anyway. <laughs> really tough to uh, Miles Sanders is one that is really tough because we don't know who the coach is going to be um as of this taping and uh oh I don't think we, we lost the your I, sound. I told her I would be done at six so um anyway so uh but so you know it's a um uh what was I going to say um uh, you know, we don't know who the coach is going to be. Uh, and candidly, we don't know who the quarterback's going to be. I would feel better about Sanders if Jalen Hurts was the quarterback. If Carson Wentz is not on the team, I don't know how that's going to happen because his contract is so ridiculous. But, you know, the three games that Jalen Hurts started, weeks 14 through 16, Miles Sanders averaged over 19 fantasy points a game. Like, again, a mobile quarterback, it was a better offense. It was a more efficient offense. So I just think it's hard to – I think he's really hard to say, but I am, I am probably more in on Miles Sanders than out because of the change at the coaching position, and because I think this is a team that is that has holes that it needs to fill, and I think they will go into the season saying like, okay, we're okay with Miles Sanders. You know what I mean? Like I think he's, I think he's a top fifteen-ish running back. If I had to, you know. Uh, Again, as we sit here in the middle of 2020 without knowing who the coach is, I'd say uh, middle of January 2020, I'd probably, you know, rank him somewhere in that, you know, running back 14 to 17 range right now. Okay, that's fair. I want to take the last two guys I want to talk about and just give them both to you. So, again, I want to be respectful of your time and just kind of give me your quick thoughts if you're bitter or very berry on them. And that's Joe Mixon and Lamar Jackson for probably roughly where they'll be ranked next year. So Joe Maxson, I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be in on. I get it; he's been injured. I think a lot of it also depends on the health of Joe Burrow. But this is a guy that averaged over 23 putt touches a game, had you know over four targets a game, over three and a half catches per game, both career highs this past year. Um, and I'm a, I'm bullish on the Bengals offense, right? Just assuming assuming the health of Joe Burrow, which is a big assumption here as we sit here and. January 2021. But assuming the health of Joe Burrow, T. Higgins back, Tyler Boyd, they'll improve the offensive line. They'll continue to get that built. I, I think he's going to be a workhorse back. You know, they signed into the big deal last year, right? So they don't they don't have a lot of options. Like they're gonna they're gonna use him as a workhorse this year. So I actually think similar to Michael Thomas, um, assuming health for Joe Mixon, I do think he could potentially be a value next year. As for Lamar Jackson, I'm probably going to be more in on Lamar Jackson as well because I like those guys that have talent, that have had fantasy success in the past, but will be down because the buzz isn't there. Like next year, it's all going to be about Josh Allen, you know, maybe some Jalen Hurts if he's the starter, Kyler Murray. You know, those are the, those are the buzzy names that, you know, coming into next year. Um, uh, you know, in addition to obviously, you know, there'll be a lot of Trevor Lawrence talk. Where does he rank, et cetera, et cetera. 
Um, but, you know, the issue with Lamar Jackson this year wasn't the production. It was where he was drafted. I mean, so Lamar Jackson, again, week 12 on, things have sort of, you know, finally got going. He averaged over 27 fantasy points per game. You're like, okay, that's Lamar Jackson. You know, even when he was, you know, weeks one through 11, he was averaging 19 points a game, just about 20, 19.7 to be specific. So, which is solid. The problem is you drafted him in the second round, right? But like Lamar Jack, and the argument for drafting Lamar Jackson at that early this year was, hey, he's going to, um, not only is he going to be the number one quarterback, but he's going to be so much better than every other quarterback that he, mm-hmm. you need to take him there. And obviously he not only wasn't better than every other quarterback, he was actually less. But now you put him in that middle range, you know, in that that Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, Aaron Rodgers, that, you know, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson, whatever, you, you know, that QB three through seven range, right? You know, Dak is probably in there as well, right? If, if you figure Mahomes is one and then, you know, we can argue about it's probably a conversation after Mahomes, right? So Josh Allen, Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, um, uh, I think yeah, Aaron Rodgers, you know what I mean? They're, they're all probably in that two to eight range, right? Uh, we can argue about what order they go in, but they're all sort of lumped in there. I think he's in that range. And so I think, you know, he's a guy that likely goes in the fifth or sixth round next year in the middle of that quarterback run. And at that page, I think I'm, I'm fine with him. I'm completely fine with him uh, getting him where I'll get him next year. So I'm very on him. I like two very berries to end that segment. So uh, we can positivity. I love it. Matthew, we're going to finish out this last couple minutes here. And what we do is we like to stand out, be unique from other podcasts you hopefully have done before. And we have a question in a game of the week designed strictly for you. Are you game? Sure. So our question of the game of the week are sponsored by Shady Rays. And when you're a shield agent like Matthew, you need to make sure you have the best shades to look the part. Shady Rays can even make the dock look cool. Make sure you get the 1.01 of sunglasses and go to ShadyRays.com. Use code TRIPLEPLAY for 25% off your order. All right, Matthew, our question of the week is, if you are starting a flag football team, you can pick any retired quarterback to be on your roster. Which quarterback are you picking? I'm starting a flag football team, and I can pick any retired quarterback to be my uh, to be my guy. Are you counting Philip Rivers? I guess. Yeah. He- right. I mean, you you know, like I think Drew Brees is about to retire. Um, can I uh, uh, can I pick him? Um, any retired quarterback? Um, I got to go Peyton. I mean, you know, what? flag football. You, you're not going Mike Vick. Not a running quarterback. I, I mean, like I guess you could go. Yeah, I mean that makes that makes a lot of sense too. I'm just trying to think like who'd be the most fun to be on your team with. <laughs> yeah, fair like enough. you know, like I mean, I'm just thinking like Peyton's really funny. Like when we all get good beers after the game, like who's gonna have better stories around the at the bar than Peyton Manning? So um, yeah, I mean, I mean you know, listen, Michael Vick, Cordell Stewart, like you know. Yeah, there you uh, go. You know, it would all be uh, would all be pretty amazing, I think. You know, um, but uh, I'm going to stick with Peyton Manning. You know, I think I, like uh, I think Peyton Manning would be a blast to be on a flag football team with. I like that, and again, like you said, the, the best part of flag football is what you do after flag football, and yeah. thing of that. So I like that. All right, the last part is the game, and it's a little this or that that I created some questions just for you. It's just a little bit of rapid fire, whichever one you prefer out of the two options. All right. You ready? Sure. Number one, who would you rather lose to in the war room championship, Adam Schefter or field Yates? Who would I rather lose to? Yeah. Who would be, you'd rather lose. Adam Schefter is a bragger. I can tell. I would rather lose to field Yates. All right. <laughs> Ryan terrain or Roy Hallou? Uh Roy Hallou. Ryan Terrain was like a beast the one year he was carrying for He them. was. I always, I have a Roy Hallou jersey. I'm not going to lie. I have so many obscure Washington running back jerseys. Like I have a Skip Hicks jersey. Do you have and, Liddell Betts? Yeah, exactly. Right? I mean, like I have a Stephen Davis, although he wasn't obscure. But like I have um, – uh, I'm taking Roy Hallou. All right. It definitely hits home because we live in the Maryland area. So we're familiar with um, – would you rather fart loudly every time you meet someone or have your mouth smell like garlic all of the time? 
rather fart loudly every time I meet somebody or smell like garlic all the time? Um, I think I would rather smell like garlic all the time. Um, <laughs> You know, I like this. I like the smell of garlic, and I, it doesn't bother me. And feels like that's something that, um, you know, like a lot of cologne or, you know, bubble gum or something like that. that I feel like that's an that's an easier thing to mask than just ripping one anytime somebody walks up. I like that one. Uh, so talk to your past self or get to meet your future self. Talk to my past self. Tell him the things that they can fix yeah. to make sure things are even better. Correct. Thousand percent. Gotcha. Okay. Would you rather mispronounce a common word in 30 minutes on TV seven times or rip your pants on air? Would I rather mispronounce a common word seven times on air within 30 minutes or rip my pants on air? I think I would rather rip my pants on air. Really? Yeah, because here's the thing. Like, that's something that happens. Right. The other thing is if I'm mispronouncing a common word, then I'm just a moron. <laughs> but if I rip my pants, then whatever, it's a funny viral moment and I probably make a gif of it. And I probably play it. And, you know, I, I wear underwear so I'd be safe. Um, you know, that's yes. There you okay. go. Last couple here. Would you rather have finger sized nipples or nipple sized fingers? It's a good question. You really, you think that's a good question? Absolutely, hundred percent. It makes you think. Interesting. Yeah. I can tell you're struggling with it. That's how I know it's good. Um. All right. Do I, would I rather have fingered size nipples or nipple size fingers? Yeah. I think I would rather have finger size nipples because I'm wearing. Oh, wow. Really, the only one that's going to see that is basically my wife. Um. And, you know, you need your fingers for typing and, you know, um, uh, for so many every day, you know, turn your car keys. I mean, you just you need fingers. So fingers size nipples, everybody's going to see it. The poke out of your shirt like that. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh, so you're saying like this, like you're saying, yeah, buddy. That's right. Yeah. They, they stick out like this. They're finger sized. They're, finger they're, at, they're at you. Just up and down. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, like basically look like you had like big red streaks or whatever. That's that's a loophole I didn't think about. I didn't think of that either. Down. Up and wow. down is probably better. I mean, like, right? Because like I'm just thinking about nipples. They're just they're on your body. They're you know they're red or pink, right? So I assume like <laughs> finger size. It's just like it's like you have like somebody put a tattoo of a finger Matthew, on your. That is a great loophole. I didn't think of that when I came up with that question. You you win. You win. You're right. There you go. All right. I'll, I'll, these are the last three: Rex Grossman or John Beck. <laughs> um i'll go with i'll go with sexy rexy you know like i thought like i remember because when rex took over as quarterback we were excited because he knew the offense right mm -hmm. he knew the offense and so yeah i'll take uh i'll take rex grossman although the correct you should ask me about tim hasselbeck my uh my co-worker yeah who, who started two games for spurrier anyway go ahead uh I remember just driving home and everybody was excited about John Beck potentially being something because Shanahan was hyping up how great he looked and everything too. That, it just haunts me thinking about that. But uh, last two here, eat an entire stick of butter or send an embarrassing email to everyone in your contacts. I'll send an embarrassing email. You can't do the stick of butter? Oh God, no. That's ugh, so gross. <laughs> so disgusting. I no. think I would do the same. I agree with you. I'd the last one. Send an email to explain later. Okay. I like that. Last one. This is the most important one. Washington wins a Super Bowl, guaranteed in your lifetime. Obviously, not from now to the rest of how long you live. But you have to see my face in some way, shape, or form weekly for the rest of your life. Is it worth how it? I can see your face. It could be on a, a, a FaceTime. It could be on a billboard somewhere you might see it. But you have, you're going to see my face somewhere, one yeah. shape or form. That's, I don't have to interact with you, right? I, I, <laughs> like, ouch. Ouch. Like, no, you don't if, have to interact. You just have to get used to seeing it. If I were to see your face, like, what do I care about that? I, you know, I see um, unpleasant faces all the time. Oh, uh, my God. So that's, as long wow. as I don't act with you all the time i will i give me a guaranteed super bowl absolutely for the washington professional football team hail to the wfts matthew i i thought you might 
be upset with me, but I uh, I didn't think you were going to break my heart. So I'll, if, I'll you just, if you had just worn a better colored wig to start this episode. Don't don't ask a question you don't want the answer to. <laughs> That's fair. I, I did walk don't, into that. Don't ask a question you don't want the answer to. That is rule number one as a podcaster. I'm going to pick up my dignity and get you out of here, Matthew. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I know you're a super busy guy. So you taking the time to hang out with all of us really means a lot. I appreciate it, guys. Best of luck to you guys in the industry. Keep crushing. Thank you so much. And uh, he's not named, nicknamed TMR just because he's a talented Mr. Roto. He's also because he's the magnanimous teacher of fantasy. So make sure you look that up, kids. Thanks again for listening and watching, everybody. More great guests and athletes coming all off season long. Enjoy the conference finals. We'll catch you guys next week.